Hi, I'm Valley from Greenwood Solutions. Today we're going to be talking about overcurrent protection, both overload and short circuit. Now, if you want these videos going directly into your feed, hit that subscription button. Let's get stuck into it. If specific current limits are exceeded, overheating in the cable occurs. And when heating occurs, there's a loss of efficiency, which is obviously translates to a loss in power. In addition, there is a safety concern. Now the heating effect is proportional to the square of the current. In the case of 100% overload, this results in a heat loss four times more than the normal load in the same time period. So H equals I to the power 2 times R times T joules, where H equals heat produced in joules, I is the conductor current in amps, R is the resistance of conductors or conductor in ohms, and T is the time in which the current flows in seconds. If the overload is massive, in the case of a short circuit of low impedance, that protective device has to react very rapidly and it has to be able to cope with the arcing that occurs inside itself. Now from an HRC fuse perspective, you've just got one, it's effectively one go. It will react to that short circuit by rupturing, therefore disconnecting that or impeding or stopping that flow of energy. Circuit breakers and fuses. They must be able to carry rated current continuously without overheating or breaking down. Protection should not operate with small overloads for short periods of time. If small overload has lengthy duration, protection must kick in. When fault currents occur, protection must disconnect circuit immediately before damage occurs. Discrimination is required, so only faulty circuit is isolated. Therefore, there's no effect on other circuits. Protection, we are talking about circuit breakers that can be reset. And we are talking about fuses, um, HRC fuses mostly, which is high rupturing capacity fuses. And they are designed to work just once. Circuit opens before damage to cable. Overload action is relatively long. Time has an inverse relationship with the current. For example, two hours at 125% overload, as opposed to three seconds at a 600% overload. Short circuit protection. Fuse or circuit breakers action has to be rapid to open circuit before damage occurs to the cable. In the actual operation, the protective device can't damage itself. It's a very explosive action, so high levels of energy are dissipated in a short amount of time. Now a thermal circuit breaker is good for overload situations, but not so good when it comes to a short circuit situation. This is where a, a magnetic circuit breaker uh, works much more effectively. Circuit protection has two distinct main functions. Protect wiring against overheating and breakdown. Interrupt supply quickly. Limit value of energy available in the case of a short circuit. And the third point is discrimination. And this happens when protective devices are in series. Protective device deals with overload currents by cutting off the flow before damage is caused to itself to joints and insulation of the cable and other materials surrounding the conductor. Now the standards are very particular about what is required from the point of view of the, um, the protective device. 2.5.3, protection against overload current, AS3000 2018 version, and 2.5.3.1, coordination between conductors and protective devices. The operating characteristics of a device protecting a conductor against overload shall satisfy the following two conditions. IB has to be less than or equal to IN, which is less than or equal to IZ. And I2 has to be less than or equal to 1.5 times IN, 
which is less than or equal to IZ. Now what do the standards say? Where IB equals the current for which the circuit is designed. Example, uh, maximum demand. IN is the nominal current of the protective device. IZ is the continuous current carrying capacity of the conductor. I2 equals the current ensuring effective operation of the protective device and may be taken as equal to either A, the operating current in conventional time for circuit breakers, 1.5 times IN, or B, the fusing current in conventional time for fuses, 1.6 times IN for fuses in accordance with the IEC 60269 series. Let's say we have a 95 mil cable. AS3008 determines the 95 mil cable can carry, say, 216 amps. So IZ equals 216. The nominal current of the circuit breaker selected is 160 amps. So IN equals 160. Max demand designed for that circuit is 150 amps. So IB equals 150. So 160 amp circuit breaker will suffice. The 95 mil cable that has been referenced was from table 15, column 11 in AS3008, um, partially surrounded by thermal insulation. In the case of a short circuit, the only limit is the impedance of that circuit. And that, that doesn't matter where you're talking about the short circuit, whether it's at the transformer, MSB or the distribution board. Conclusion. Excessive heat in a cable can lead to potential safety issues. Protective devices must cope with overload and short circuit currents. You must know cable and protection specs and how they relate to the max demand of the circuit. Thanks so much for watching our presentation on overcurrent protection. My name is Veli from Greenwood Solutions. Now if you like these videos and the others we've produced, please hit the subscription button and hope to see you next time. Bye for now.